everybody, Kyle Goethe here from GoatFilmReviews.com and the Goat Film Reviews YouTube channel. And I've got my first reaction to the new Zack Snyder film, Rebel Moon, A Child of Fire? Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire? Um, full disclosure, I am a fan of Zack Snyder's work. Uh, I was there opening night for his Dawn of the Dead remake before anybody even knew who he was. I quite liked that film and, and it, it triggered my love for a lot of the original films because I, I hadn't seen a lot of those at that time. Um... I I think 300 is very entertaining. Uh, Watchmen is one of my favorite comic book films of all time. Um, and I even mostly like a lot of what he was doing with the DC films. I, I was positive on Batman v Superman. I didn't love Man of Steel. Um, and I think his cut of Zack Snyder's Justice League was, it was a better cut overall. So it pains me to say that Rebel Moon, whatever and so forth, is an is an awful movie. This is a this is a bad movie. I don't know how to sugarcoat it because it, it feels like this movie is easily the worst movie from 2023. Uh at least that I was able to see. Uh it's yeah. So going ahead, you know, it's it's essentially a rehash of the Seven Samurai story which was already rehashed for Magnificent Seven, which was rehashed for things like A Bug's Life, which has been done to death in a number of things. Star Wars did an episode um, that felt very Seven Samurai-ish. Um, everyone has kind of hit on this, this motif. It's not something that I think is a bad idea to do. Um, as a space film, I think it could work. I think it should work. The problem is that this movie has no real soul to it. It has no real reason for taking this and adapting it. Um, I don't think any of the characters are interesting. Back to the beginning of the film. When the film opens and we get this extremely long-winded, heady, plot plotting um, introduction by Anthony Hopkins' uh, character, where he's, he's describing all the... He's basically doing the opening crawl from Star Wars. I got lost in that, in that sequence at the very beginning because it just... It was so plotting. It was so intensely descriptive in a way that you're basically throwing information at me instead of actually like diving into you know unveiling layers of the film there's just information being thrown it feels like a descriptive paragraph in a novel that doesn't but the, but the problem is in film it, it, it just sits there it sits there and rests there and i think Without anything to really connect to that opening monologue, I couldn't remember much of it after the first few seconds. The plot of the film, since it is so derivative of A Seven Samurai, of that classic story, it feels like we're not doing anything interesting with it. You know, there's the opening um, about the rice fields and the, the evil guys that come in and try to take the, you know, get in on the action. And our lead character goes off in search of people that can defend her land. Okay. But it was then so wash, rinse, repeat. Every single location they go to, they introduce a character that we don't know. They give them one really stylish looking action sequence. And then they recruit them and they go to the next thing. But the problem is none of the none of those sequences felt like they really had – they all took too long. None of them really had any weight to the story. I, I, specifically, there was the one where the uh, the character is fighting this giant spider woman. And I was like, are, are we supposed to know who the spider creature is like or how that really matters? And we spend so much time in that sequence that it's like, when are we going to get back to the plot? When are we going to get back to the story? Because we're just messing around in time. None of those recruitment sequences felt like they really had any weight on the film, nor did any of them flesh out the characters. None of the side characters of this film were fleshed out in any way, shape, or form um, outside of just this person uh, – flies this griffin thing and this person fights the spider woman and this guy was a warrior um and that's all we really get we don't know anything about them as characters i feel like the finale i didn't realize we were in the finale of the film until about two-thirds of the way through it because it didn't feel climactic at all the twists and turns that were specifically near that finale i felt were obvious and then where the film leaves, it kind of reminds me of it's, it's Always Sunny quote where he goes, and the film just sort of ends. You know, they, they've recruited all these people. They go back. And I just don't feel like it ended in a place, you know, like we'd introduced Anthony Hopkins, this robot character with a couple of scenes that really didn't seem like they fit the movie at all or fit where they were. And then they reintroduce him at the end and he's got these 
these deer antlers on his head and like we're not given any information as to why and i get that they're probably setting up for the second one but still it's like when he comes back on the narrative it's like why do i care why do i care that anthony hopkins's robot guy now has antlers or why should i care uh you know it felt a little fake death it felt like there was a number of people who like were given this death scene and then taken back um which makes me wonder like who else is not really dead um yeah, it was just a, a really messy, messy movie. And I wanted to like it, but even I felt like Zack Snyder's action in the films, he directs action quite well. I think this is kind of some of the weakest action he's directed. I, I didn't really get a sense of grandeur. It reminded me of the heavy CGI uh, action of Man of Steel, where it just kind of got lost in a CG mess. I, I The the slow motion thing, we, we know he does it a lot. It's kind of like lens flares for J.J. Abrams. We know what's coming. There was so much of it that didn't, feel necessary there's moments like this didn't happen in the movie but like it's similar to like a person picks up a set of keys but they pick it up in slow motion like it, it's this that kind of thing that just happened a lot throughout the film it also is a movie that so netflix's release strategy for this film is to release part one in a pg-13 version and then i believe it's to release part two in a pg-13 version and then to eventually release an uncut version kind of forced Zack snyder cut if you will I think that's a bad idea because honestly, this movie, it felt like it was shot for an R rating and then heavily cut to get that PG-13. And that's frustrating when you're watching a movie to feel like there was stuff cut to make a studio happy. They should have released both cuts back to back and just let people choose which one they wanted to watch. Because I will watch the extended cut because I'm, yeah, I do this, I do this thing. I do this thing where I watch movies and because I want Zack Snyder to make a good movie, um, I want to give him a chance to have a new cut, but it's frustrating because this was a waste of time for me. This two hour and 15 minute movie, which felt like four, uh, it felt longer than Zack Snyder's Justice League. And it just kind of meandered through all these sequences that I didn't have any emotional connection to at all. And stuff on screen does not equate to story, does not equate to characters. And so much of this film is stuck with stuff on screen. And I was really bored throughout the movie. Um, so I will end up watching the extended cuts, but I guarantee you that they're already going to be better just by the very nature that they won't feel like they chop stuff out for a studio and, and so that they can reconnect with the original. They should have put this movie out in both versions right from the get go. It's insane to me that they would try to hook, line and sinker their viewers into watching a, the same movie twice. And they say it's a completely different film. Okay. Okay. I get that. But if it's a completely different film, different film, <laughs> Then again, like, why are we, why are we doing multiple cuts of it? Cause if it, it just, it feels to me like there's a lot of information being thrown around about how this release strategy is going to work that I don't really, under, <clears throat> I don't understand any of the reasoning behind this. This doesn't feel like a smart marketing move. It feels like grasping at straws to create a pop cultural zeitgeist thing. And the movie just didn't work for me. So I'm sad to say it because I am a big fan of Zack Snyder's work. There are more movies of his that I like than dislike. But this was not one of the liked ones. Um, I was incredibly disappointed. I'll still catch. I'll still catch part two. I'll still catch the extended cuts. I'm going to give him a try because I do believe in. In I do believe that he's a, he's a solid, auteuristic director. He has a stamp that he puts on his movies. But unfortunately, he stamps Rebel Moon Part One with more of his flaws than with his abilities, and that was disappointing. So let me know your thoughts on Rebel Moon Part One, A Child of Fire, down in the comment section below. Make sure while you're down there, you like and subscribe. There are two free things you can do that help support the channel immensely, and you never miss new episodes of the show as they drop. You can also check out GoatFilmReviews.com for my many written reviews. You can find Goat Film Reviews on Facebook. You can follow me personally at Almighty Goatman on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and Threads. I'm a member of the Minnesota Film Critics Alliance. You can check out that webpage for other critics outside of myself and, of course, more of me. Uh, and you can check out my show Kyle and Nick on Film that I co-host with Nick Plodchuk from the St. Paul Filmcast. We have new episodes of that show every single day. All those things that I just talked about are down in the description of this video, and we'll see you next time.